Welcome back to Ring Fit Adventure and another episode of Like a Pro, where I talk through fit skills and movements in Ring Fit Adventure and give tips, potential regressions and cues to make sure you're performing your moves correctly. As a PT, basic movements are incredibly important to me, and looking at all of the movements that we do in Ring Fit Adventure, I think the one that occurs the most is definitely the squat, so that's what we're looking at today. We have squats as attacks, to jump, to swing, to open chests, and as part of more complex movements later in the game, so it's absolutely vital that we get our squat form as best as possible. So let's talk about our squats and what we need to be aiming for. We're going to go over some basic cues, how to perform it, a little bit of troubleshooting with the thigh strap and some regressions and progressions as well. We're also going to cover wide and overhead squat. So let's not mess around and let's get squatting. So first up, we have our standard squat for Ring Fit Adventure. Now, this is quite simple in theory. I'm gonna go through the very basic stuff first and then go through some very important cues that you need to make sure that you're doing to really, really nail that technique, okay? So first up, first up, hold the ring about chest level. Hold the ring about chest level. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and keep our back as straight as possible. Nice, proud chest. We're going to hinge at both the knees and the hips at the same time. Pop the bum out, come down to a 90 degree angle with the back of the knee, so parallel to the floor, and then push through the heels, extend the hips and knees, and that's your basic squat. That's kind of where we go with that, okay? So again, head up, proud chest, pop the bum out, and back up. Pop the bum out, and back up, okay? Wanna make sure we're getting parallel to the floor because otherwise it's not going to detect. But more about that later, more about that later. So those are the very basics for the squat. Now let's get into a little bit more detail. So the first really important cue to make sure that we've got good muscle alignment and we're keeping our posture as best as possible is when we're coming down, feet shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointed out, and our knees in line with our toes. That's a big one. So, see my feet are kind of out here. I want my knees out here as well. Now that's important for someone like me who's got knock knee or someone who has bow knee. You know, you don't want, when you're in your squat, you don't want to be doing this or this, okay? You need to be in alignment with your feet. Your knees and feet need to be in alignment. So when we're coming down, it can be very easy to kind of do this, all right? That's why we want to keep our eyes on a fixed point. That's a really good cue. Keep your eyes on a fixed point. So I'm looking at my kitchen cupboard and I'm dropping. That's helping keep my spine in neutral alignment. Now I say neutral because that can be neutral for you. The game says keep a straight back, which is fine. That's kind of, you know, that's what you wanna have. You wanna have a straight back, but people have different postures. So we need to make sure that we're accommodating for that. So that's why I say neutral for you. You don't wanna like twist yourself out and make yourself in pain or something like that. That's not what we want today. All right, next, hip flexion and knee flexion. So when we're coming down, see we've got that angle. Got at least 90 degrees or maybe less. And we're sticking the bum out because that's helping recruit more muscle fibers in the glutes. They are the biggest single muscle in the body. So it's important to make sure that we are using as much of it as possible to get as much power out of the squat as possible. All right, and then when we're at the bottom of our squat, we've got that nice, nice alignment there. What we're gonna do, we push through the heels to come back up and we extend the knees and the hips. If you can, keep your shoulder and your heel in a line but that can take a little while. So just make sure a nice smooth movement as you're coming up, pushing through those heels. So those are the main points for the standard squat. Make sure you use those cues and you're gonna absolutely nail it, okay? There might be something a little bit off that you're doing or something like that. And I know my form's not perfect, but it's more than acceptable and that's what's important. But the thing is, as you may know, if you've played a little bit, there are some other squats in ring fit. We've got the wide squat. Now the wide squat basically changes our stance to more like a kind of sumo stance. So instead of feet shoulder width apart, we want them slightly wider than shoulder width apart. N toes pointing outwards, so therefore keep your knees outwards. So it uses more of the glute med, which is this one. And then because your legs are in abduction, so they are abducted away from your midline, you're gonna be using more of your abduction muscles. So like along here, okay? So that's basically, it, you want to keep those same, you, you really want to keep those same points though. You want to make sure that you're still keeping your eyes on a fixed point, like I'm trying to look at the camera and it's a bit weird. Down to 90 degrees and push through the heels. Okay, same sort of thing. And then that last version is the overhead squat. 
So this is a progression of the wide squat. So we're still in that same stance as wide squat. It's basically the same, but the arms are up here. Now, does that change a lot? Yes, because this actually shifts your center of gravity. So your center of gravity is completely out. So it is more easy, or it's easier even, to tumble over, which you don't want. And it's very easy to do the whole thing where, you know, if I do this from the side, it's very easy to want to do this because your center of gravity has changed. And we, you know, that's absolutely what we're trying to avoid. So nice tight core, and you really wanna be, this is gonna be using the front and middle deltoids as well. Keep yourself nice and braced and drop. Okay, drop. It's really important to get your breathing right on this one. So we want to be inhaling as we're going down and exhaling as we're going up on the hard part, okay? So. Okay, that will help keep your core nice and tight. It's also gonna help with your posture, keeping yourself as straight as possible and keeping your arms up. But apart from that, the same cues as the wide squat, okay? So those are the squats. Those are the fit skill ones. And to be honest, the main variations that we are going to see during our time in Ring Fit Adventure. There are some alternate ones as well, like in the mini games or the mega ab guard that you do during boss battles. But those have the same cueing as the squat. So it's still that important movement pattern that you need to be nailing. You may need to do a lot of practice and that's totally fine. If you are really, really struggling, it is best to strip it down to the basics. So we're going to look at some progressions and then we'll look at some progressions after. Now, regressing the squat. Regressing the squat is absolutely fine to do, especially because you need to make sure that you're nailing that basic movement pattern. So if you're really struggling, that's totally fine. As I said earlier, it's similar to sitting, right? It's the same movement pattern as sitting. Grab yourself a stool and sit. Basic regression, just sit down. You may not quite get the full 90 degrees there, but you're keeping your back straight still. You're still keeping the rest of those cues in. It just gives you somewhere to rest your weight at the bottom. That's an easy way to regress it. From there, a more weight bearing one, you use something, you hold onto something. So when you squat down, hold onto a TV, hold onto the wall, hold onto a pole, something like that. Keep yourself in that same position. Keep yourself in those same cues that I gave earlier, but you've got something to hold your weight onto. I don't have a pole on me, which is why I'm doing that. That will help you get that more weight bearing version and build up to the standard, okay? Now we've done regressions, let's look at a progression. So this is actually quite simple. Um, basically, there's, there's a couple of ones that I would recommend. If you've got a weighted vest, try that. That helps distribute the weight evenly across your upper body, which is gonna help when you're doing your squats, and it just increases the resistance that you're fighting against on the concentric phase, okay? Now the other one, and this is you know the easiest one if you don't have too much equipment. So the detection on the squats is all based on the thigh strap. It's all based on that knee and hip flexion, okay? So you don't actually need this. So if you want to improve, you know, once you've set it up, you need the ring there to set it up. Once you've done that, gently put the ring down, grab yourself a weight, nice and easy. It will still detect because it's all based off the thigh strap, but you can hold a weight instead. Goblet squats are absolutely perfect for this. So it's the same sort of idea, it's the same sort of exercise, same cues, but instead of holding the ring to you, you're holding the weight close to your chest it just helps with the center of gravity and everything. So we're gonna come down and we're gonna come up. Okay. Nice and easy. And the other question is, would I recommend something like a barbell? Like you could, you could, although I'd be very wary because generally in Ring Fit you're doing 20 plus reps. So you need to make sure that the weight you're using is something that you can do for those amount of reps. Okay, um, obviously you can just stop in the middle of it if you get extremely tired, but you don't want to overdo it basically is what I'm saying. It's perfect for endurance training. So lightweight barbell squat, if you can do that, go for it. Now, a quick little add in thigh strap detection. The thigh strap can be a little bit problematic. And so I am doing a full troubleshooting video on the thigh strap. However, I do want to touch on some of the squat specific issues because the squat is one of the ones that people complain about the most. Let's go over a couple of little basic ones right now. So the squat movement actually requires the thigh strap to go through a specific range of movement. If it doesn't get that full range of movement, it's not actually going to activate properly or you won't get like the fire from the head. You're not gonna get your great reps or anything, okay? Now the main thing is is that your thigh strap has to go from vertical it has to go to horizontal so it's actually going to be moving 
through this motion in order to get the full detection and to register properly, okay? If you're really struggling with the squat detection, it could be that your thigh isn't actually going from vertical all the way to horizontal. It needs to be at that 90 degree angle at the knees, as we said in queuing, but if it's not quite doing that, you know, it could be going to here, then it's not gonna activate fully. So what you wanna be doing is trying to increase that range of movement, which could require some stretching on your part. It's not actually a thigh strap issue. But if you are going through that full range of motion, if you're definitely doing that and it's still not working, then you need to hit recalibrate. So go into your settings menu, hit recalibrate and do the calibration again, and this should fix it. I have heard of one more quick fix as well, which is where people start on their tiptoes at the start of the rep and then go down into the into the squat. That just increases that range of motion and can work. You can sort of treat it like, you know, like an additional part of your squat. Um, you can, you know, calf raise and squat. So it could be theoretically a progression, but I don't recommend relying on that. I'd recommend ensuring that you are definitely going through your full range of motion there and looking at recalibrating before trying that one, okay? So there we go, that is a primer on squat technique for Ring Fit Adventure. I hope you've learned something fun and I hope you've enjoyed the video, got some tips from there if you were struggling with your squats, I think they are a really important basic movement to nail and hopefully this gives you the right cues to be able to make sure you're doing it as safely and best as possible. As a conclusion to the video, let's just quickly briefly go through those cues again. So stand shoulder width apart, keep your knees in line with your toes, hinge at the knees and hips, keep your back straight. Don't let your knees go further than the ends of your toes. Bring your thighs to parallel with the ground or a 90 degree angle at the back of the knee and then push through your heel to return to standing. So if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments and let me know what your favorite type of squat is. Thank you so much for your time today and please hit the like button if you've enjoyed this or learned something from it and subscribe for more Ring Fit content coming soon. Thanks again, I'll see you soon.